Hello everyone, welcome back to Not A Real Road Test. This is spring season in Forza Horizon 4, and today I'm going to show you the 1999 Ford Racing Puma, an epic recently unlockable retro rally car. I managed to win this car back in Horizon Series 22, just before the end of the series, and in this review we're going to drive this car stock, see how we can improve the way it drives, and then drive the better version of itself. I picked this car because we're currently in spring season in Horizon 4, basically the beginning of another metaphorical year in the game. A fresh start, if you will. And I thought a new start is a great opportunity to present to you a Ford with the New Edge design language, which in many ways marked a new, fresh era for Ford by giving it some room to reinvent itself. I like old Fords, but I truly love the New Edge era cars, including the proud Mustang, the humble focus and especially the stylish cougar as well as the puma that we're driving today models from that era are all very eye-catching and gave ford a more exciting and futuristic brand image at that time and performance fords have such a positive reputation with good reason too they were genuinely engaging to drive easy to work on and in the real world they were as fast as contemporary sports cars all while being affordable to those from more modest backgrounds that's quite an achievement. So I think the Puma as a concept was a very good idea in that it's a stylish coupe that's based on the underpinnings of the contemporary Fiesta. This way you get the ease of maintenance and the fun chassis, but without the ubiquity. And those are the reasons why I've picked the racing Puma today. So let's go and take it for a spin. For those who weren't around back then, the Puma was a sports coupe sold in European markets between 1997 and 2002. Based on the Mark IV Fiesta, the Puma was one of two New Edge era coupes in the Ford range, the other being the beautiful Mondeo based Cougar. The racing was the flagship level trim and highly exclusive too, with only 500 examples leaving the factory. It was effectively this generation's Fiesta ST that didn't exist. The racing Puma may look like a regular 1.7 litre Puma that's been stanced, but it's actually more sophisticated than that. Underneath the racing Puma's body, which was fitted by the reputable British coach builder Tickford, you get quite a few bits of serious kit, such as the Alcon 4-piston motorsport brakes. Being motorsport, they don't come fitted with the protective rubber boots that usually stop debris getting onto the pistons, so you do need quite a regular and detailed servicing for these. You also get a strengthened gearbox with software that allows more torque to be transmitted in lower gears, an optional limited slip differential. A wider track that's paired with some more hardcore springs and dampers, which are a joint project between Ford, Eibach and Zax. Not to mention the metallic imperial blue colour, a special racing colour only used prior in the Escort Cosworth and the contemporary Focus RS. Quite a few serious additions there. The Puma Racing cost £23,000 in 1999, which is just over £40,000 in today's money. In contrast, the regular 1.7 was £13,000 and the base 1.4 was just over half the price of the racing. So it was ultimately this hefty premium in the racing's price that was part of the reason Ford had to sell so many of them internally rather than to the public. In Forza, this retro rally car will set you back 250,000 credits at an auction because of course you can't buy this car from the auto show in Forza Horizon 4. By the end of this road test that's not real, I'll give my verdict as to if I think that is worth paying for. For the price, you might think you get above 200 horsepower, right? Well, you'd be wrong. Ford were originally going to turbocharge the Yamaha Fettel 1.7 petrol four-cylinder unit to 180 horsepower, but spiralling project costs resulted in a more down-to-earth, naturally aspirated tune of 153 brake horsepower at 7,000 rpm and 119 pound-feet of torque at, I'm going to say, 5,000 rpm. The good news is the less than expected power in the Puma is only pulling 1170 kilos or so, which is what you want ultimately. This and the closer ratio 5 speed manual transmission allow for a 0 to 60 time under 8 seconds, which is commendable for a car of this era in this class. Top speed is 126 miles an hour, which is arguably not important for a car like this. 
In terms of Forza performance class, the Puma is in the middle of C-Class, with its performance indicator of 549. It's part of the Retro Rally crew, one of my favourite categories in Forza, so its rivals are the likes of the Impreza 22B, the Evo 6, Lancia 037, and even the Puma's uncle, the 92 Escort RS Cosworth, not to mention the two recently revealed homologation Celica exclusives that have come to the game as well. Outside of Forza, there weren't really any hardcore versions of the Vauxhall Tigra or the Peugeot 206 CC, so the Puma was kind of in the middle between affordable driver's cars like the Mazda MX-5 and the higher-end stuff from the time like the Renault Clio V6, Honda S2000 and the Fiat Coupe. As for the type of person who drives it in real life, it's most likely a Ford middle manager who probably got quite a good deal on it though more likely as a second car to escape from the drudgery of their Gear Trim Mondeo that they keep seeing everywhere, from their workplace car park to every supermarket ever to every motorway ever. With all of that in mind, let's go and see how the racing Puma finds its limits in stock form. First impressions, it's a very approachable vehicle. Shit. A front wheel drive rally car is an interesting approach. It certainly makes it approachable for the more junior drivers that want something easier to get used to, something that's a bit more forgiving. And this car is, it's quite engaging to drive. I can already tell it's hugging these corners really well. And that's a consequence of its lack of weight and tiny wheelbase. So I'm driving this car at 10 tenths and I'm still having a decent time. If you cock up a corner, it is relatively easy to fix what you're doing because you are only dealing with understeer, really. This is a lot less powerful than some of the other cars I've driven. I'm consistently trying to make sure that I stay in the power band, in the higher revs. It's a good job that the gearbox has closer ratios than the regular Puma, and specifically it's the first two gears, and that does help for the drive at 10 tenths everywhere vibe that this car exhibits. So as soon as you get into a corner, it clings on. I think this is a very good example of a car that handles a lot better than it goes. It just feels like could do with a bit more poke it is a shame it does dive straight into the corners though providing you judge the corner entry well and for the most part i am sort of staying in my <laughs> ideal apex line it's very easy to adjust because most of the time you're not going insanely fast so you can just break a bit and adjust your your consistency with the apex line it does feel surprisingly at home on this gravel track Ooh. <laughs> I'm rather enjoying this. I mean, the vibe I got from this car, it's lower to the ground, it's got wider arches, it's all that kind of stuff made you feel that this is more of a track car, but of course this is a retro rally car. I can tell the gear shift is pretty good as well. That's why you can get off the line in sort of eight seconds or so from a standing start to 60. software clearly working very well there. One thing I'm not a huge fan of is that engine sound. I suppose this could be a Forza thing versus real life, but I'm just not a huge fan of the noise. I bet you will be more at home in some of the tight corners that Edinburgh City has to offer. I really am enjoying the looks of this car. The reason I like the Cougar a bit more, I think I'm a fan of larger cars anyway, but I, I mean, I would say the Cougar is slightly better proportioned. It's more sleek, whereas this is a bit squashed together. But working with the dimensions that Ford had, I think they did a cracking job. In terms of length, this car is less than four meters long, and for a small sports car, I think it looks banging. I absolutely love these rear tail lights. I think they are similar to the Cougar as well. They're all teaser style tail lights. One thing Ford have always done really well, and particularly with the new Edge designs, the Puma. 
looks really handsome, I think, but it's not overly styled in such a way that it looks good, but not in a very aggressive way. It's a very friendly looking car, I think. Some would call it cute. Ford have always had that everyman appeal. Ah, I missed that. How did I miss that? That's the thing with cars like this, with such a tiny wheelbase and an approachable level of power, and of course being front wheel drive, but you can do cool J turns and stuff like that. I'm actually really enjoying driving the Puma racing in the city centre. It's only out in the windy roads where you are a bit annoyed that there's not the 180 horsepower that was originally promised, but this car corners and responds really well to my inputs. This is just someone's, I don't know, <laughs> alleyway. Good thing there aren't kids playing around here or dodgy deals going on. Now, I did slag off the engine sound before, but in this bumper view, it sounds a lot better. More enjoyable, actually. I think this is probably the most suitable view for this car because that way you feel every move and every maneuver. There's a Mini Cooper S in front of us. I have a Mini Cooper S in my garage. In the game, obviously, not in real life. That would be awesome. And it reminds me of that, actually, because the Cooper S has such a good chassis and suspension setup and everything. You can drive it at 10 tenths anywhere and you're still not in danger. You're having a ball and it's not too powerful either. Don't get me wrong. There are some thrills you get while driving really incredibly powerful cars but there is a more simple joy I'm experiencing in this car in that I'm just having a really pleasant drive because it's addressing all the corners I attack really well. And while I may not be going too fast, I'm getting very good sensations. So quite happy with this car. Overall, this is a, this is a good starting point. I was just about to go into sixth gear then, but then I realized I couldn't. How fast can we go without Exploding your engine. Got to about 138. I'm going to give up. I don't want to crash this beautiful car. There are a few improvements we can make to the racing Puma, so let's go and tune it. So we're in the upgrade shop because we want to tune this racing Puma to unleash its full potential. There are a number of key areas that I wanted to address, so we'll start with the weaknesses. The big one here, I think, is power. I do like having the naturally aspirated tune. I think it makes the racing Puma a more pure experience. But when I'm going up hills, and there are many on this Horizon 4 map, I feel like I'm lacking power, and that really annoys me. It almost spoils the experience. Of course it doesn't, because this racing Puma, it's really rewarding in the corners, and I think that's more what this car is about. But I'm a bit disappointed with the power. Of course, Ford did have a budget to make this, but this isn't real life, so I'm going to throw some money in the powertrain department to make the Puma even more exciting. It is a sensational car, truly. The agility that you experience in the Puma racing is truly exceptional. And you never seem to run out of grip. You are in a front wheel drive car, which I don't tend to drive front wheel drive cars, but I do enjoy the really good ones. Potentially, we might want to get a limited slip differential or tune the existing one in this racing Puma. And another thing that I've enjoyed so far is the gear ratios. We are limited by the gear ratios in terms of top speed, but the actual placement of them, it keeps this car in its power band. And I think once we add more power, you'll get even more positive sensations because you're constantly changing gear. And it's really rewarding to change gear in a sports car like this. It adds to the positive experience. I think sports cars are about the raw sensations and you're changing gear more often if you're nailing corners all the time as you are in the Puma Racing, thanks to its amazing chassis and suspension, you're going to feel good sensations. I'm also going to keep a spare rally suspension and tyre tune for the Puma Racing, simply because we can't forget that it is a retro rally car, and I'll use this kit specifically for rally racing. Now, although a lot of rally cars today are all-wheel drive, I'm going to keep this car front-wheel drive because 
Although I am sort of understeering at the limits here and having an all-wheel drive setup might give it a more neutral feel, I would add quite a lot of weight in doing so. And one of this car's key strengths, truly commendable, is its lack of weight. So we don't even need to weight reduction bro this car. I think to realise this retro rally car's philosophy, we are going to have to give it more power. That will really capitalize on the strengths it will close the weaknesses and will have a really well-rounded car that's living its full potential i think it will remain authentic this way so i finally selected my tune now let's go and see how the modified racing puma drives i'm very excited to see how the upgraded puma handles and drives I've given it an extra 100 horsepower, so it's got 255 bhp. That's quite a huge rise. And I did think while I was tuning it that I do want it to give off the same vibe I feel from my tuned Mini Cooper S with nearly 300 horsepower. It's an absolute beast and it can just absolutely kick the arse out of every corner. This feels more exciting already and, you know, I didn't throw myself out of that corner so I'm going to get addicted to this car as well, I think. I was pretty happy to hoon this car about but I was just a bit annoyed at the lack of power but now that gap has been closed. 255 horsepower in a car that's, you know, less than 1200 kilos, that's something quite unique I think. See, we're going up a hill now and we're still accelerating. That's it's not phenomenal, but it's a welcome improvement. So I think the upgrade has helped the racing Puma maintain its agility somehow. What I mean by that is the agility is still there, but the limits are higher. Truth be told, there wasn't a lot I could do to improve the handling of this car because it's just so perfect already used to understeer a bit at the limit and one thing I did was I've given the brakes a slightly rearward bias and was before when you were braking it felt like I understeered a bit but now it feels ever so slightly more neutral but amongst all those performance upgrades this is still a really easy car to drive it ticks that box and yes I think an element of unpredictability is a factor that causes excitement in many cars uh, we'd be breaching this car's philosophy if we did that. This car was meant to be easy to drive, and we've kept it that way. I'm really impressed at how this car grips at low speeds as well, because we haven't made it so powerful, and I know a turbocharger or a supercharger would give it more power and more torque, but we'd just be torque steering everywhere. I don't even feel like I need this <laughs> limited slip differential that we've got. And that is testament, actually, to the to the engine tune I've given it, but also the Puma's chassis. And of course we gave it a racing clutch, so it feels like a back road barnstormer that it was supposed to be. You don't need a really, really powerful car to have fun. This car proves it. So I know I said that it needed more power. That's because the chassis was so good, it deserves more power. It's more at harmony now. It's like and at some point I will do a road test of my tuned Cooper S. It's similar to that. I started with a chassis that could handle loads of power and could handle every corner on this map really well in a predictable manner. But I gave the Cooper S, well, I almost doubled it in power and, I, and this is exhibiting the same effects. We're popping now. That will appeal to the the yobs of Forza Horizon 4, I think. Yeah, I think it would appeal to all of us, really. It is one of the most agile cars I've ever driven, actually. Just don't go on a straight, though, because you'll, you'll reach the top speed and your ears will bleed from that sound. Although that noise does kind of remind me of rally cars when they hit the rev limit. Old rally cars. So you can tell this car is a retro rally car. Not forgetting the true spirit of this car as a rally monster, I'm pleased to say that the positive characteristics of this tuning setup that I've given the racing Puma are also applied on gravel tracks like what we have here. 
Oops. So going quickly enough. Feels pretty balanced here and stable. Very agile. And it feels just as easy to drive as it did before. More of an oversteer feel. Consequence of the slightly rearward brake bias that I did in the setup. Woo. <laughs> That's the closest I've got to oversteering so far. It's so easy to drive on loose surfaces, and we've got quite a bit of pace as well to back that up. Phenomenal. They've done a tremendous job on this. Oh, look at that jump! Oh yeah, nice drift. Nice and controllable. That's what makes it approachable to the S1600 series of rallying. I'm very impressed and this car is rivals with the 22B and the Evo 6 and you know other four-wheel drive cars. While this is front-wheel drive and those are four-wheel drive, I'm sure we could probably conquer rally corners at higher speeds. Those cars are very good to drive because I've driven the 22B and the Evo 6. They're very good cars. This appeals in a different way. I'm not for a moment going to suggest that this is better than a 22B. It just appeals to you in a different kind of way. Because 22Bs, they're really easy to add 500 horsepower to. And in fairness, that is what you should be doing with them. This, being front wheel drive, is just perfectly fine with 255 horsepower. And it puts a huge smile on your face. I do find this actually better to drive in this tune than the Focus RS. I've got a tuned Focus RS. I use it for rallying over the road. The Focus RS is great on the road as well, but the reason I like this more is because it's more agile, it's easier to have fun at low and high speeds. Not bashing the Focus here, but this is in a class of its own with regard to its agility. This is probably the most agile retro rally car. I am very, very happy with this car. The smiles per gallon are high on this one. Eventually I came away from the metaphorical pedals and steering wheel of the Puma and decided to give my final thoughts. When I first jumped in the Puma, before it was tuned, we had a car that had an amazing chassis with what felt like infinite agility and just limitless grip. A very good driving experience to begin with, but in my opinion, marred by the lack of power that Ford couldn't feasibly afford to give it. So then we went to the upgrade shop and we addressed those issues. We dialed everything up to 11, but especially the power with an increase of 100 brake horsepower. And we found a real sweet spot. The engine tune made the racing Puma powerful enough to be enjoyed on a lot of the back roads that Horizon 4 offers, but not so powerful that it lost approachability. Meanwhile, the agility remained, even in the tight corners and the wide corners, but the grip limits went up even more, so you still had the agility, but you could go even faster than you could before, so you would only lose grip really, really at the limit, and even so, it was quite easy to bring back into control. I also ended up buying rally parts, because this is a retro rally car, and I did enjoy myself a bit too much while tuning this car on the road. I remember that this is a retro rally car. It ought to have a change of clothes per se if we ever wanted to do some hardcore rallying and it handled amazingly there as well. So a very remarkable car at the end. If you look at the racing Puma against its competitors, I would say the Escort RS Cosworth is more well-rounded just because it's four-wheel drive. The Racing Puma is more comparable to cars like the Peugeot 205 T16 and Renault 5 Turbo, which are also small, incredibly agile cars. But you must remember that while you can go into the auto show and buy the 205 T16 and the Renault 5 Turbo as many times as you wish, this Puma is an exclusive to Forza and it is therefore priceless, which truly puts it into a class of its own in the retro rally category here. But the racing Puma stands out in the retro rally class for its combination of what feels like pure agility combined with that ease of driving it and ease of control. It's a really, really unique car and I'm so glad that I drove it today.
ultimately, I think the racing Puma does what it was intended to. It can go fast on a gravel road and a tarmac road and put a smile on your face while doing so, while not putting you into a tree. That's what the racing Puma is about. Now, do I think it is worth paying 250,000 credits for at an auction? Now, as wonderful as the Puma is with its astonishing agility and that smiles per gallon factor I got, I don't think it's worth the 250,000 credits that most auctions ask for unless you're rolling in it. So if you're just starting to play the game, it's a car that you have to work up to. And when I say work up to, I mean you have lots of money before you pay for one. And then you should get one for your emerging car collection. It's a very high price to pay. And it is a lot of fun and potential, but not a quarter of a million credits worth. It does pain me to say that. The song I picked to describe my experience in the racing Puma was 192000 Soul Child Remix by Gorillaz. Damon Albarn, who was in Blur before he started working on his Gorillaz project, in some ways took a new direction musically. In the same way that Ford went in a new direction for the new Edge design era. And the cartoonish face and overall style of the Puma does have parallels with the cartoon band that is Gorillaz. The Puma is of course a very animated car and Gorillaz, yeah I'm going to leave that for you to work out. This song made me feel incredibly positive while driving the Puma and is just really nice and agreeable to listen to. Incredibly similar to the Puma, but in a musical sense. So this was the 1999 Ford Racing Puma. This utterly priceless car is very appropriate for the road racing, street series, dirt and cross country series. And the song that really got me into the vibe of driving it was 192000 Soul Child Remix by Gorillaz. I hope you enjoyed this not real road test and I'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching.